Oh, I'm sorry. Well, hopefully it worked. Yeah. It <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're here to give you guys all an update and to give you the status of where we are and let you guys know of the things we believe are the right things to do to move forward with our recommendations. And uh, we have a presentation prepared, and Jerry is going to go ahead and start off that presentation. Thank you. Um, oh, I didn't even see this. Do you want to do a roll call, Jerry? Yeah, just do a roll yeah, call. Yeah, okay. All right. It is technically a special meeting. So okay. Yep. All right, Frank. Here, Mike. Here. Brad. Here. Greg. Here. Jerry. Here. All here. Great. Thank you, Jeremy. <coughs> all right. Welcome, everybody. I think you've all sort of know the ongoing saga. I don't think I need to go through the full history of Serrano Water District and all that. That's usually about a 10-minute, you know, scenario. You've all seen that presentation for, you know, each year over the last five years. We're just really just going to try to go over where we're at today and where we're going moving forward. So what we'll cover is the update on the proposed new path for Serrano Water District, what's changed in the re recent years, the challenges the future hold, and how we intend to meet those future challenges and the options in the proposed path moving forward. So what are the challenges? So over the last few years, we've told you the challenge of Santiago Reservoir, the cost, et cetera. Um, and also we used to pitch the, the supply reliability we received from Serrano, or excuse me, from Santiago Reservoir. But what's increased the most now is the cost and the liability more than the actual reliability. So those are the challenges. So in 2018, if you remember, when we had plenty of rain, the Lake Orville spillway failed. And then what happened was the state mandated that every spillway in the state be inspected. And so prior to that, our spillway was considered in decent enough shape to use it, right? So then they mandated that we inspect our spillway as well, and it was found to be not in great shape and that it needed to be replaced. So just a picture of the spillway, needs a little TLC. I mean, it may look fine, but it was found to need replacement. Um, the outlet tower, that was already on the table to be replaced prior to our need to replace the spillway. We thought we were going to be in for maybe a $20 million project total at that time, and that's, that's it's out of the water, no pun intended. Um, we also have the Smith Reservoir booster pump station. That is indefinitely time to replace. Um, it was built in 1970, and some things built in 70 last a long time, but this one just isn't quite making it. So the pumps need to be rehabbed, and the tanks have to be replaced. We also have our treatment plant where we treat water coming from out of Santiago Reservoir. Um, and so there's costs involved with that. There's upgrades over time. There's you know, maintenance that needs to happen, and O&M costs that continue to go up. So the year 2020, let's go back four years. We gave a town hall presentation back then where we said, we estimate the cost for all our project to be 35 to $45 million. That was just when COVID was kind of, you know, hitting us pretty hard, right, with, a, with all the construction costs escalating, et cetera. So we thought the, our portion, by the way, this is not the total cost of the Santiago Reservoir Project. Our cost was $35 million. So Irvine Ranch is here present. So we're only 25% of, of the total cost. That's 25%. So we were at about $6 million back then for the Smith Reservoir Project and about $4 million and maybe some well rehabs and pipeline rehabs as well as some other equipment replacement. Where are we today? Sticker shock. So we're looking at, right now we're looking at $100 million minimum, okay, with costs just going up. They keep going up. The requirements from the state, they keep throwing little, throwing little you know, curveballs. Go ahead and do a cracking study. Let's see, see what's going on with the dam itself. That right now is an unknown, you know. So... We're at 85 to $120 million for our portion, Serrano Water District portion, you, the ratepayers here in Villa Park's portion, is $120 million potential 
for 2,285 service connections. So, and we have a $30 million uh, Smith Reservoir tank that we need to replace now. It was only $6 million a few years ago. And then pipeline costs have gone up. Everything's gone up. And we have no idea how far they're going to go up. It can go even higher. So what's the cost to retain the lake? And ha Excuse me. The cost to retain the lake have become unsustainable for a small district, the board believes. Today, the estimate over the next few years to pay for the required capital, we're looking at a 10 to 15 percent rate increase over an unknown amount of time which could double your rates very quickly. So it's reached an unaffordable level, and I've, meet, and I've said it once before, 20, there's only 2,285 service connections here. So, so how many houses are here? About 2,285 houses, right? So you try to extrapolate $120 million across 2,285 homes. You can imagine, do the math. It's there. It hits hard. So what we've done is we've contacted other agencies to discuss the alternatives that would allow SWD to continue to provide high quality water to its customers at reasonable rates. So the board has come to a point where they think that for the best alternative and recommended path forward for these costly assets and liabilities is to trade them for increased reliability. So we're looking at transfer of ownership of Santiago Creek Reservoir, Irvine Lake, to Irvine Ranch Water District, the co-owner of the lake, which is up to, again, $120 million avoided cost of the ratepayer. We'll also look at transferring the treatment plant to Irvine Ranch Water District, which will avoid required capital and O&M needed for the future. Upgrades and the unknowns of state requirements, you know, to meet water quality needs, et cetera. And in that, a new connection will be provided from Irvine Ranch Water District for additional reliability. So we're not giving something away. We're still going to have a connection from the treatment plant, but they'll give us an additional connection. So you're actually increasing the reliability that you had here in Villa Park and portions of Orange where Larry Dick lives. So, um, and then the Smith Reservoir, Reservoir Project costs then shrink because we don't need to replace the whole the two tanks that are there. We can do one tank and save us almost, I would say, $20 million in cost. Because what we'll do is just rehabilitate the pumps, not replace them with bigger pumps, just rehab the station. So we're looking at decreasing the liability but increasing the reliability. So after long discussions and many meetings with um, SWD and IRD, we have mutual agreed, excuse me, I can't, let me get some water here. <laughs> IRWD um, has conceptually agreed to accept and transfer Santiago Reservoir and the whole water treatment plant in exchange for providing backup supplies to Serrano Water District. SWD will continue to run from within Villa Park and will continue to provide water to its customers from the wells within Serrano Water District. IRWD will provide the same water that we've been providing. It's just they're the ones that are going to be treating the water at the treatment plant. We just won't be doing it. In addition, we'll be provided an interconnection. So if you know where Cannon Street is, going up over the Brit, over the Santiago Creek, over into Orange Park Acres area, the proposal is Irvine Ranch will run a pipeline underneath that bridge to give us that extra reliability from and I could be corrected on this, Paul, but it's going to be MWE treated water, possibly. It's not the same water every day. It's just the, it's all flowing from different places. It could be from MWD, the Dyer Road well field, and the Orange Park Acre well that they just finished getting the PFOS plant running over there. So you're going to get the same high-quality water that we've been providing you as well. The end result going forward is we'll continue to supply current rate pairs with a more reliable water supply, and allow SWD to remain competitive in the industry for amongst the county. So, in a nutshell, $150 million potential cost, which it could go that high, because right now we're at 120, and what's another 30 million these days, right? That we're trading that for now 150 million to a 15 million. 
dollar liability, a huge benefit to the ratepayers. So the next steps are a tentative agreement with Irvine Ranch Water District with us, Serrano. Um, we are thinking this week-ish, and then uh, legal staff will then work on the final agreements because remember, nothing's really done, okay? As much as we say we're going to do term sheets, you're going to say, wow, you're doing all this, this is happening. It's, nothing's done until it's signed in ink on a final agreement, okay? And we expect that to be maybe around November-ish. Might be a little aggressive, but that's what we're looking at. Now I can leave it to the audience for questions or the board to give a little. I saw Kathy first. No, I think I can clarify that. What it is is that we're not just a middleman wholesaler. We actually have operations, pipelines, we have wells. We're not, that, we're not giving everything, and I wouldn't even say giving. We're trading a liability for reliability. We're not giving everything away from Serrano Water District. It was a huge asset. It was a great thing to have, but it's not all of our assets. We still have wells. We still provide an operation. We supply water to you from the ground. We run an operation. Just a treatment plant was one of, our, one of our operations. It was just one of our things that we had in our toolbox to provide you water. But we still exist, all the pipeline here still exists underground. All the stuff to your house exists. And the board of directors still needs to manage, manage the district. It still exists. It's not like we get, we're giving everything away. It's just a portion of our operation. The, uh, uh, the wells that we have that provide your water uh, provide about 75, it varies year to year, 75% of the water that is consumed in, in uh, Biddle Park. So uh, uh, that doesn't change. It's, it's the other water, the water that we have to fill the gap from. And that, that's what's changing. It, it'll no longer come out. It, we, we, we had to rely on uh, capturing native water behind the dam before. Uh, we won't have to, we won't have to do that. Didn't we agree to have water from Irvine Lake too? Well, that's what I'm talking about. That's Irvine right. Lake. That was a big part of what filled up of groundwater well, I can explain it. See, what is Santiago Reservoir, Irvine Lake? That water is captured during wet events and is stored for the whole purpose of it built. And when they studied it in 1925, was to how can we store water during the wet years when no one's using it? You know, no one uses water in January, but you know what? Let's capture it and let's carry it over to the summer of the next year. So, and this is way back when it was all irrigation here, it was all farmers. I mean, there's like maybe eight farmers or 10 farmers in this area of Villa Park. They were, and so what it is, it, during the time was to bring the water a year later so they could use it. Um, only over time was domestic drinking water even, even part of this. But that water in Irvine Lake only supplemented the water here in, in Villa Park. It wasn't the main source of supplies. Like Frank has said, 75% of the water we, or 82 now, 85, I mean, it just keeps going up. At some point, they may do 100% BPP, and that means we can pump 100% of the water out of the ground. It may make it to where we, that would be a stranded asset for Serrano. That would be a great asset for IRW. It would be a stranded asset for us, and all of a sudden, we're not even taking water out of that lake. So we, that only supplements us. It's not a total supply. Some years it's 100%, but most of the time, it's about maybe 10 15% supply. Kathy, there's also the treatment of the water, no one mentioned as well. So we also need to treat the water as well. 
So, I, I no, I well, no one mentioned it, but that's a big part of the operation. Yeah, but sometimes a mining operation costs more than the gold just extracting out of the. So, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Jeremy. Okay, just a quick, just uh, about groundwater wells and and so, <clears throat> Orange County Water District sets the amount, the percent of water for each retail agency in northern and central Orange County. Orange County Water District, based on groundwater conditions, and they do a lot to replenish the groundwater basin. They establish how much, what percent of, of the total water supply for each agency is allowed to come from the ground. And so with a number of things that they've done in recent years, um, you know, right now it's 75, it's going up to 85 percent. So groundwater is really going to be where, where the action is in some ways. That's not to say that Irvine Lake isn't an asset. It is. And Irvine Lake, or Irvine Ranch Water District, they're the 75 percent owner. And so, and they're a much larger agency. They have things they that they can do with Irvine Lake. And so they, you know, how you absorb the cost is going to depend on what kind of agency you are. Um, but to your questions, there's still things that Serrano Water District is going to do. I mean, that most of the operations and assets are still here, but there will be a couple, and they're expensive ones, that would be, uh, you know, if, if this deal goes through, that would be shifted to IRWD. Yeah, I was going to say, hey, Paul, it might be a question for Paul. Yeah. <laughs> go out and build a MET connection, oh, I sound much better now, um, would be very expensive also. And it's still, it's like, what do you do with the lake? So we're willing to take that on. We've run the numbers, and they work for us. The, the cost of water, I don't know where it is right now in terms of your blended rate, because uh, I don't know your operational issues with the Howeiler plant. But from what I've been t told by Jerry, and back me up, if I'm not, or correct me if I'm not wrong, the cost of making water through Whole Island right now is more expensive. Our proposal to, um, for pricing the water, based on our discussions, was we were going to cap it first with a discount of the MET treated rate. So again, 
you're getting all the reliability, and it's even cheaper than Matt Water for 30 years. After 30 years, that would be a time schedule by which the whole other plant is pretty much done with its useful life. Um, then the discount goes away. If, if we're still under this arrangement where Serrano is Serrano and IRWD is IRWD, we'll continue to honor our service agreement. That doesn't terminate. The discount goes away. But at that point, you'll have access to potable water from Irvine Ranch Water District at no more than the MET treated rate. So that's, that's the bar that we found to be very fair, both agencies, because um, if you have a MET connection, that's probably the most expensive water you're going to get. If you're going to go you know, get water from here or from there, you're always looking at, eh, but is it more expensive than MET water? Because I can always buy MET water. At least that's the way it's been for the past 100 years. So that's, that's how we price the water with that cap going forward. There are discounts for the first 30 years, which go away after 30 years, but we're willing to continue to provide that supplemental water to uh, Serrano for as long as you guys want it. That's actually part of this project. There are, you know, part of it cost is that we know, whether you want to say the word climate change or whatever, I mean, it's a reality, right? So climate change is a little bit. Temperatures change, the water, the, you know, the water cycles change. So what's happening actually is part of this cost is that we know we need to try to capture more water. We're actually increasing the height of the spillway as part of that project, which is a negligible cost compared to the whole cost of the project is a huge benefit from the small, I mean, from what they're increasing it, to capture more and actually store it longer because the current deal is with the state is we're under a restriction that we can only put flashboards up right now during a small window of time after all the big rains have occurred and they still gotta wait for it to gone, you know, gone down and it's barely coming up and they're putting the flashboards up to try to catch, catch 3,000 acre feet sustain that, but now they're going to have year-round year storage to capture, maybe you get one crazy January storm where you were, had to let it go over the spillway, and that's the only one you have for the whole year. Now you can capture that. So. And as it works, well, that's the one we're, we're not doing that. We're, we're, Serrano's not doing desalination. We're too far from the beach. But, but Orange County Water District can play around with that. Very expensive water. Might as well do this project. Go ahead. So uh, these estimates are certainly frightening. I, I just want to find out who gathers the estimates and what's the uh, explanation for a 300% increase in the Well, who gathers that are the engineers who are in design, and then they do engineers' estimates, and we vet it out with other engineering firms and actually hire other folks to make sure it's a cost, you know, it's a, what do you, what do you call that, a cost, um, estimate. cost estimate, estimate, engineer's estimate, and you actually have someone vet that out. It's, it's a constructual, constructability study, and et cetera. Hey, are they telling the truth? Are they overinflating the cost? And, you know, it's been vetted. And, and it's so, not simply, hey, it's this project, and it costs this much. Oops, it went up. It's this project and a whole bunch more components have been added by the Division of Safety of Dams. That's who regulates this structure and all dams in the state of California. So Jerry explained that in the presentation. As the projects evolve, more and more elements of the project have been um, hoisted, uh, um, requested nicely by the DSOD, Division of Safety of Dams. Hey, we want, we want, we all want very, very safe dam at the end of the day. There's a couple million people downstream of this dam. The failure's not an option. Period. So we gladly accept that risk. We gladly accept the requirements of DSOD. And we've actually gone through some pretty cutting edge uh, risk analysis of the two of our agencies to show that what we're doing um, following DSOD's lead is actually going to make this the safest thing we possibly can. So it's, it's both the cost of and it's also the scope of. Yeah, th this project cannot, ha cannot not happen. It has to happen. It has to be repaired. So. And, the, and the question, about if I can add on the capture of stormwater, I'll even say like today, like last winter, we were actually releasing water before we got anywhere near the top. 
because the spillway is compromised. So we're already not doing what we could be doing. And that's where we're at today. It's already, mm -hmm. I'll say, too late for optimization without the major rebuild. And I, I, my friends were calling me going, why is there water running down the creek? It's a sunny day. Yeah, because ten, ten million keep, dollars worth of water. Yeah, we had out. to keep the level low, and it's, we're just you know that makes Jerry and I cry because we know that's that's worth money, and that's worth the resource to both our communities. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> well, we did start this project has been going on for ongoing. What it is, the state said, okay, here's a study. Now, now do the next study. And then it's like, all right, we do the next study. And they say, all right, do, now do a semi-quantitative analysis and, you know, risk-informed decision-making analysis. And all of a sudden, boom, now we're on another lead, a path of cost escalation. And then we're, all right, now do a cracking study. You know, what's the next study? I don't know what the next study is. So we're, it's, we don't know what the next study is or the next regulation from DOCD. So you just get a different guy up there and says, you know, let's throw another regulation in there. I think the design effort, we could say, it probably started in like 2015. Yes. So it's been almost 10 years. We, we started this 15, 10 years ago. What Jerry said is true. There's no actual construction that's ever been No. You've got to design it first. We have to design it and it has to be approved by the state. So no, we're in. It's, 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 it's a process. A big, a big process, unfortunately. Yeah. Big process. Yeah, the design is... Is I mean, we're 90 just from a right? design, perhaps the most critical thing of all, because it can't fail. It can't, right? If it fails, it, you know, it's catastrophic. So you got to do it right the first time, and that just takes time. So just one other comment. So you get to the point 90% design, and it's like, okay, we think this is it. We think this is for sure it, right? So it's like, let's not keep designing and keep throwing money at the design firms. Wait a second. They just put a cracking study on us. So wait, stop. Don't do anything yet until that cracking study done, because maybe that 90% design, you've got to scrape back down to 60% design and add a whole other component to it. Yeah. And, and the cracking study, so you understand, it sounds very scary. Um, it's, it, so we're looking at it. Uh, it's something very common in the dam building, dam maintenance build, uh, business, which is if there's an earthquake of a reasonable expectation in the reasonable location, the, the, the failure mode of a dam that they, uh, we would look at, we have looked at, is a shift in the structure of the dam, and that would create the crack. That's the cracking we get concerned about. That's catastrophic failure. So we call it a cracking study, but it's basically a failure mode study. So you have no idea when you can start actually fixing things? We have an idea. We have an idea. They but I tell you right <laughs> now, it, de it depends on the final conclusion of the cracking study, but I would say probably within a year. Sir. Sure.
That is actually one of our next steps, looking at rate comparisons and seeing where it all looks and makes sense. This is a first step. Yeah, we've this is our first step. That, the next step is seeing where everything works out and makes sense to the rate pair even forward, because where is it all going to end up once we get rid of the asset? And if I may, that process has started. The lake timeline is now. And so we had two issues, and we grappled with this. We kept merging these two issues. Finally, we decided, let's separate the two issues, get the lake transfer done. Next step, exactly what you talked about. Because otherwise, we have legal liabilities to start building very soon and get and go on with a lot of costs in the millions of dollars a year alone, just in design and, and, and approvals. Right. It's, 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 it's unbelievable. And remember, the, 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 the lake itself, the reservoir, was a backup to the water district that's what, what's delivered to your house. We've been pumping water here with the three different agencies that now are South or are Serrano. That there was the, the pumping people and then there was the irrigation people. And they, they're the ones that built, built the berm out, out at the lake. And so in, in many ways, it is an asset at this point we don't need. Even if we were to get met untreated water, we put it into the lake first. Now we have to treat it at the whole water plant. So there's a lot of moving parts here all at once, and we're trying to simplify this. And uh, add the, the next steps are to, of course, do the rate studies that, that you just uh, uh, referred to, Bill. So. But, yeah. We've been pursuing that. We actually have grant writers. We have lobbyists. You have to do, you have to deal with lobbyists, unfortunately. You know, that's a bummer, but it is what it is. You have to work with lobbyists, state and federal. We've had them. Here's the thing. We were trying to go forward and really do this project. So we've been really going after, chasing after the Congress people, et cetera. You know, we got some earmarked money possibly for our Smith Reservoir. But I'll tell you what, the dam funding stuff is just not there. And the money you're spending trying to chase after that is, is sort of like, you're spending a buck to get 50 cents. I mean, it's just ridiculous what the payback is on that stuff. Yep. We, we're doing it. We're a little active in the state of California in politics, but uh, with Serrano, we formed a coalition um, for dam repairs um, with, with um, uh, Santa Clara Valley Water Agency and a few other agencies. And uh, we were so successful, we got $50 million for the entire state of California. Just to give you some perspective on how little the state's willing to put forward, and so far nothing from the feds. It's a huge, I mean, it's an enormous issue. I mean, we're on top of it. We have the ability at least to address our own problems here, I'll say in Orange County, but the rest of the country, I'm from the Midwest and I watch dams fail in Michigan and, and other places, and it's, it's too late at that point. We don't want to be in that position, but when it comes to clamoring for federal funding, it's going to be a, a, a madhouse. So we feel like this is one we just, we just got to get on it. We can't wait. Madhouse, you have to play. Yep. Yeah. Well, we do. Now we do. We I think you're better off getting funding for Smith. <laughs> that goes right to yeah. your bottom line. So, yeah. Some of the environmental <laughs> groups aren't real big fans of dams to begin with, and so getting funds out of a limited universe of funds is is, is challenging. That's, that's up to the board. I, I don't have the answer for that one. So. We won't know until we do our research. Right. I mean, that's the reality. And you might be 100% right. Yep. But until we do the rate study, we're a little unique in both parts because our average water usage is 40 units of IRW. About 30. Units. Uh, 12. 12 units. So we're a little unique, and those are the things that we think to take into consideration and look at in the rate study because if we go to some other rate structure, like they have a budget rate, we have a flat rate. You go to a budget rate, similar to theirs, people that overuse water are going to pay through a lot more money than the people that don't. So those are the type of things in the rate study that we're going to be looking at. And, and we've hired an outside consultant that just came back to us with 
some of the results that we're going to go over tomorrow. All of you are welcome tomorrow. Come to the board meeting because we're going to go over exactly what you're talking about on what he found. And so that's far. not 15 so to 18 far. years. That's that's like two to three. I mean, uh, it's a faster. <laughs> I know, no, and but it is. We're literally having a meeting about it tomorrow morning. Kathy, and then Larry. To come down to an actual worth of the assets, I couldn't give that number off the top of my head. Well, about. For the whole district, including? Yeah. Well, the problem is when you look at. Your... We haven't done it. I mean, it's, the master plan is a little outdated for me to give you a cost estimate of the actual all pipeline wells, et cetera. I couldn't give you an absolute well, number on that. Well, I mean, actually there's, there, Kathy, there's, you know, there's the, the lake component and then there's, you've got what it was built for, which is what's on the books. And then you got our current replacement values, which is sky high, which is really what we're talking about. Right. Less, exactly. Not a lot of assets, but so it's I want to know what the well. What you do, but, is but you in like turn, the, the value of the lake itself to us has decreased over time. Be quite frank with you, because we have to treat everything going through in that lake through that whole water plant. So we built a new plant about six, 16 years ago, or something like that. And so with all that consideration, all those different costs are now since we do m mostly 85 percent or so of all of our water is pumped to treat that water is very, very low compared to treating it at the whole water plant. That's why Smith is there. And that's why we can uh, lower the size of that because the contact time is much different than it was uh, regulated, say, 10 years ago, as an example. Well, the liability it, it, is $120 million. Yeah. It's, so it's, it's at least kind of that. Point. It's at least that. In the room. Yeah. Well, we've got, we've got wells, we've got facilities, we have infrastructure, we have PFOS treatment, we have a lot of those things, that, especially two, PFOS. Two reservoirs. Two reservoirs. I mean, those are all assets. Asset study on what your assets are? Do we? Well, we know if they are. What's he yeah. What we maintain on our books is the assets that we, when we acquire, right? So we have about 24 Yeah, and there's, there, yeah, there's another point, too, that, that's kind of important to think about, and that is that while there's liabilities associated with the lake, there's also real value associated with the lake. I mean, that, that's, that's why our deputy's interested in it, because it, it, it opens, it's the largest reservoir in Orange County, right? You couldn't build it today. And so it, it has value in that sense. You know, it, if, if, if Serrano were to keep the lake, which, which would be very difficult, but if, if you did, I mean, you could potentially sell water to other agencies as a, as a which which IRWD would do right so but the the big difference is that you know IRWD has a huge rate base Serrano has a small rate base and so it's easier to spread that huge initial cost over a much larger rate base you know if if you have the size to do it
<laughs> right. Yep. Well, you're trading a 15% increase every year for the next God knows how long years down to a lot less. So that's what you're trading. Well, we, we think that's pretty unpalatable to most folks in town. Well, but you haven't put it out there yet, but now it's... Well, we, we have the analysis of what it, it can be. We, it, the, the panel, it boils down to, if you do huge. simple math, on what it would cost, it would be 150 to $200 per month per household. That's just for, simple math, for with, water, without for finances. Or, or, or on property tax. Yeah, on property tax alone. Yeah. Yeah. How many are willing to do that? Raise your hands, please. In, addi in addition to your water bill. <laughs> well, Larry can buy it. Well, well you. Well, that's what we're doing. We're, we're doing the reliability, and, the, and, and we're, that's the big deal. Because after you're, since you can breathe air right now, the only other thing you've got to have to live, you've got to have water. And we've got to keep the water coming out of your taps. And so you can also drain everything away, too. Wash it away. At a reasonable rate. Hey, Pam. Let me turn the tide a little bit. If the lake was available to purchase, for $140 million, would we? Yes, we have. And that's when we get down to the $2,000 you just talked about and the 15% rate increases. So it's been a 100-year treasure for us. Now it's an uh, ongoing liability. Absolutely. Well, the dam right now is worth 100 and some odd million dollars to repair. It's the water behind it. That, and then what about the drought years? And what about the future liability? And what about the potential cracking? I mean, I gotta, I'm the youngest or, or newest member uh, and least knowledgeable member of this board. And my, my history of water is probably more like many of the normal um, residents in Villa Park. I was all about water rights when I got on the board. And the bill back then was $30, $40 million dollars. Then it was 60, then it was 80, then it broke 100, and then it got to a point. I mean, at 30 or 40, it was going to be very expensive to maintain, and we were going to have to try to sell to the, to, the, to the residents why the rates were going to go up. But now it's at the point of, it's just, and we're not done. I mean, this is where we are today um, in terms of the cost. So it's become very apparent to me. I, I, it, water rights are really important, and it's very, it's in, it's very simple, but water reliability is actually more important. And now we have a triple backup system as a result of this. And remember, 85% of our water actually comes, up to 85%, sorry, next year, comes from the well water. And we have a great treatment plan as well. That's not part of the deal. Would you be owning 25% of the water if you were 1931. 1930. That's the beginning. Well, it was 25%. It was a yeah, we had us, and we had Carpenter, and then Irvine. So it was 50, 25, 25. Yeah. No, I know. That's what I say. Is Carpenter got a Yeah. The percentage is, you go right over there. Irvine companies. Yeah. And we didn't buy it from them. We traded them for a liability. 
Interesting. Something else to think about. You're talking about a, a couple of grand per household per year for on your tax bill. That's before you get any water. Yeah, you still got to pay for the water with the escalation. It doesn't buy you it's any very water expensive. At all. No, you're more than that. A couple million, million and a half, too. I'm with you, Pam. I don't want to give it up either, but 120 million over 2,200 customers. You know, I, well, you need to tell the governor no more wage hikes then, you know, at all the time. So that, that's not going to happen either. Uh, so, Pam, 85% um, you know, of the water we use here in Villa Park comes from Orange County Water District, not IRWD, not the lake. Most all of our water comes from Orange County Water District, which is basin water. So we pump it out with wells. So most of the water you guys drink is that water. It runs through that new PFOS treatment plant at, uh, at SWD on Lincoln. And that water is scheduled to, we have their rate schedule ballpark for the next 10 years. It's at least 10% a year increase. Then we can't do anything about that. Well, yeah, but we sell a little baby, baby amount. Uh, minuscule. It's nothing, it's not worth even talking about. So my point is, most of our water comes out of the ground, has nothing to do with the lake, uh, has nothing to do with metropolitan water. We don't use much of that. And it's going to escalate up for all agencies around us, not just us. We're just a wholesaler. We get the water from them, and we supply it to you folks. But it's, it's on an escalation hike for the next 10 years. So is metropolitan also. So we're still going to have escalation. <laughs> Pam, I think 50 years, if it, my own estimate, Pam, 50 years from now, you're probably right. You know, but how do we, and 100 years ago when they built it, you know, there, was, there was some uh, sacrifice in the early days, and we reaped the benefits for the last 50 years, and now we're on the other end. And do we want to pay it forward for the next 50 years? I, I think that'd be tough sell. And I, I'm with you. I would love to keep it, but I, don't think, I think it's a very tough sell mathematically, especially with the rates escalating. And the fact, one more thing, Pam, back then they got 100% of the water from the lake. We're not as reliant on the lake anymore. So because we have other sources. And this deal brings us other, other avenues to reliability. to yeah, reliability to bring in water. So, And that's chapter two. Well, we, we, we deliver water through the pipes. What's the point of the water district? We can save more money. Right? Am I right or Maybe. We don't, that's, that's, we don't know. Yeah. We're doing a study on it. We have a consultant. We're on it. But the other, other thing, go, go ahead, Jerry. I was going to say, come to the meeting tomorrow. We're going over what the consultant found. That's just a. Pre no, 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 this is value. on, on you're talking about rates, on what, what will happen as far as the rates and that type of study. And this is just a preliminary study that we can go forward looking at the, the next step. But we'll know tomorrow if you're anyone, like I say, you're all welcome to come tomorrow and see what the uh, consultant's going to tell us. Or like, he's not going to be there tomorrow, though, is he? 8.30 in the morning. Yeah. But the other thing, too, is that we, you know, we're spending a lot of money just trying to comply to get ready to... Uh, redo the dam and the intake tower and, and Howeiler and Smith. So all, all, all this is going on simultaneously. We're burning a lot of money right now. 
And so we see that, and, it, and we, we see that it's going to actually accelerate and increase. So at a certain point, we had to say, gosh, you know, if, if we could get rid of this liability and keep the reliability, of, of course, it's just another source for us. Because we're a water delivery agency. That's what they all are, including Irvine. They have different sources themselves. And they may or may not use that lake water. They're going to use it in many different things because they do a lot of different things than we do uh, than compared to other agencies. So there's a, that's why they run their numbers. And for them, and at the altitude the lake is, there's a lot of technical reasons why, that's of more value to them than what we can sell, basically. That's what it really boils down to, I think. Mm -hmm. like, like well, yes, sir. Expensive. That's pretty valuable, isn't it? Bingo. Purchase Serrano? No. There's really no purchasing. It's they did. You just take over. Take over. Consolidate. <clears throat> uh, I mean, even Golden State couldn't buy us. I think that's the next step thing. Because this, this decision needs to be made on this project sort of now. Because we are right now, we're right now, we have an application that's right on the finishing line for a WIFI loan. And the thing is, though, if we continue on with this project, it's going to end up escalating the cost even higher because the federal BABA, Buy American mm -hmm. stuff, and the Davis Bacon, David Bacon Act, I mean, all this stuff is going to increase the cost because they put a ton of shoes, or, you know, strings on the on the loan so it could increase the cost overall by another 15 to 20 percent because we have to comply with that so we need to make the decision now yep. so we can pull out of that with you loan so we don't just put a huge strings on the on the loan or on the project <clears throat> right and there's also the timeline too because of the division of dam safety because of where it is where how you juxtapose where that berm is Look at the people it would wipe out if, if, it, if it fails. And this, as, as both Jerry and Paul said, it can't fail. It can't. And so that ups the cost a lot. And also during construction. Even during construction, we're going to have to have an alternative source because there'll be no water coming out of there. We're going to be pumping 100% uh, out of the ground or, from, or, or getting transfers through other... Because all the agencies cooperate with each other. So it, it's, it's, it's a good... It's really a good thing. They're not really competing. It's, it, they're just providing water because... It is essential to life. We're, all, really. we're actually all intertwined. Yeah. We have interconnected. Every agency in Orange County, is, you, from Seal Beach all the way over to, I think, even Irvine Ranch Water District, you can get water from Seal Beach somehow, some way, magically, if we had to, through everyone's system. We're all interconnected, but the valves are closed. But as for an emergency, we, we cooperate. I don't, <clears throat> I definitely don't want to be, you know, a rebuttal to that, but here, but, and he can correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a lot of, a lot of, I mean, this is not even what IRWD's argument is going to be, but I would argue that with the new, there's a new regulation coming down where the state of California on my birthday, July 3rd, is going to, I believe, enact, make water conservation a way of life. And you're actually going to start seeing in Orange County, it's going to happen in Villa Park. It's going to happen to you guys, too. There's no way around it. They're going to force down our throats more regulation. We're going to start having these projections where you, everyone needs to start reducing indoor usage, outdoor usage. We're going to have to go out with, with aerial data, with, with um, satellite imagery, where they're going to fully analyze every single property. You're going to see a reduction in the water usage in Orange County. And what's going to happen is that you're not going to need desalination. And what's going to happen, you have a huge stranded asset because we can meet 100% of our use needs in Northern County, where we are, with the groundwater. You don't need the desal plant. And then you're going to have another stranded asset that, that's out there that wastes a ton of money on. That's just my opinion. Good. 
<clears throat> well, here and here's the. Here's here's the and here's the other one where people come back on that. As soon as you and you guys are seeing it, I don't know if you are here. I know you are in Villa Park. I'm seeing we're installing new service connections for these wonderful ADUs they're putting in next to your house, right? So what's going to happen? I don't know if it's going to happen in Villa Park. It's happening in Westminster, but I'm seeing it here too. That I will say in the next 20 years that half of the houses in Villa Park are going to have an ADU, which is going to remove whatever the size that ADU is. If it's 1,200. 2,000 square feet, that's no more grass, and now you're going to be using maybe 50 gallons a day, 100 gallons a day in that ADU, rather than 1,000 gallons a day on the, on the landscape. So you're going to actually, with a population increase, see a decrease in consumption, as well as the landscape requirements. Anyone builds a new house here, it's going to be right there inside the plan that you can only do a restricted amount of landscape. You can't just tear your house down and be like the way we've been in Villa Park. Just go ahead and lay out the rolling green carpet of grass. It's going to completely change. It's coming down. You'll have a Tucson, Tucson lawn, which is gravel. <laughs> no, they'll, they'll, give you a, they'll give you a waiver on that one. Ma'am, in the back. Especially your avocado tree, Jim. You're, that's a massive avocado tree. Ma'am, in the back. You said, what about the well water? I didn't. What do you mean? Well, well, the fortunate thing here where we're at in Orange County is that most, most any water that's coming down here, especially Villa Park, it's going over to the bomb pits over there, which that's not Serrano Water District, by the way, so people quit calling me and saying, hey, what, what are you doing with that? That's not Serrano. That's Orange County Water District. That's an old gravel pit, okay, that the bond company, who, and blue, whoever, Blue Diamond and these folks, sold the pits to Orange County Water District, and they used, instead of being just gravel pits, the water's coming down through Santiago Creek. The water that we can't capture at Irvine Lake, that's coming down and being captured in those pits. So, and by the way, if you're overwatering your lawn and it's going down the gutter, it's going right into those bomb pits anyway. So it's being recaptured. So go and ahead and the, keep overwatering so we can, you know, collect the money, I guess. And, right? and the water in there is from the river, by the way, the vast majority of it. So it's pumped over off, off of Taft and by the river, and it comes right on over. And that's how we get the PFAS in the water here because it all comes from the, 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 the watershed up to San Bernardino and up into the mountains. So that's why we all have to live with that and treat the water. And that's why the PFOS treatment plant we have over on Lincoln Street, it's there and we can change the resin as, those, as the requirements from the state change. So we, we've, we've been thinking about all this ahead of time and thank God that the engineers at uh, OCWD and the people we hired, that they, they, they thought about all this. So it's, 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 it's a little more intricate than you think. And, uh, but the main thing is we have to have water for everybody. That's the, we have to have that to survive. So uh, anyway. Oh, how does this come to fruition? Does the board approve it, or do we get a vote on it? Or what? what happens is we're taking your input, and yes, we can act, but we want your opinion about what we're doing here and all your feedback. We just didn't make a, a unilateral decision as a board. No, we, we won't do that. We're, that's why we're sitting down we're, here. We're we, we are here. We are here because we're rate payers like you are. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why we're, we, want, we want to have these questions. We think we've, I think we've actually thought about most of them, but there's a couple zingers in there, which we, we appreciate. So that's why we're doing all this, because we have to communicate to you. And... And it, it is confusing, and it, 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 you can wonder why we're doing it. It's because we were wondering why we were doing it too sometimes, actually, because it's, um, it's complicated. And then, and then the requirements change, as Jerry and Paula just mentioned. It changes all the time. So we're here, and we, we think we've, I mean, originally the, the three districts that are now, Serrano, I mean, they've been providing water here for a long time. And we intend to do that in some shape or form or another, whether it's with us or with IRWD or City of Orange or whatever. It's going to happen. 
But the main thing is that the, what we call the meter mile is uh, that's, that's really what the issue is here because we don't have a lot of meters per mile of piping. And that's why it costs more here a little bit. And we're trying to keep that at a minimum so you can maintain your current uh, lifestyle on your properties as much as we can until the state just obliterates everybody some more. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. You know, another old house. Another old house. <laughs> yep. You can zoom in, right? Mm, I don't know if they're doing Zoom. Yeah. That's, that's effectively gone with the transfer by a tick or the Irvine company to all those rights went to the county. The county runs everything out there now. The, 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 the county of Orange. The but but the we still have the rights. Some income. Yeah. But how much is that worth? Well, what it is is part of what we chat about is that we will transfer the rights, but we still receive the benefit because what it is just let IRWD and the county manage it, but we'll just receive the benefit from the rights. So, and the revenue. There's there's a formula, but there's. I mean, it's not a month. It's just not some huge money maker out there right now. You know, something needs to happen out there to make it a money maker. You know, whether to make it the next Live Nation or something out there. You know, on the lake, but it, something needs to happen to make it valuable. Right now, it's not. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. Yes. We can only deal with what we have in front of us. So yeah, and we're not going to get try, try to try to prepare. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. The thing that's sad in California is half of the water is for environmental, forty percent is for agriculture, and only ten percent goes to the residents and the consumers. That's California. But nothing any of us can do about it. But it's, it's just sort of sad to think all that water that goes to the ocean that should be captured in the environmental form that we have. And the Delta is no better off than it was 30 years ago. Yeah. There, there is an important point to remember on that, though. <clears throat> and that is in northern and central Orange County, you're doing better than South County, and you're doing a lot better than a lot of other places. At least you have options, because you do. All right, you have groundwater, you still have water from the lake, and it'll be available, uh, you know, after, after the transfer that's, that's you know, kind of contemplated here. So you're going to have water supply diversity. You're not going to get in a situation where you're not going to have enough water. 
and that's the key. And some people can't say that, so that's that is a good thing, and that's probably partially to blame for Sacramento as well. <laughs> but uh, so that is, I mean, it's tough choices, but they're choices that at least keep you going and give you the water you need. One gallon. How many does a walnut take? Five gallons. To make one walnut, five gallons of water. So it's the way I'm thinking, I don't know why they allow it. I know they're, we got to eat, but do they have to grow it in California, the things that take all the water? <laughs> Fry a bunch. Yeah. We'll get that for you. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Harry? So in a nutshell, um, you folks have elected us, the board of directors, sitting here to operate Serrano, Serrano Water District to the best interests of you folks. We're all ratepayers, just like you guys. We're concerned about our water rates. We don't have a lot of ratepayers. We have about 2,260 ratepayers. It's a very small amount of ratepayers. And when you take on a liability that this is growing to, it just turns out to be too expensive for our rate base. We just don't have a big enough rate base. So we're concerned about reliability to make sure you always have water at your home and our homes. We're concerned about the cost of the water. We want to be competitive with surrounding agencies around us. And we want the quality of the water to be the very best. So that is our goal as a district. Um, as we said, we are studying the rates. We, got to, we, we were doing this kind of trying to do it in a one swoop, but then it turned into two swoops. Like Jerry mentioned, we have this big loan coming up called the WIFIA loan, which is a low interest government loan. And that due date is coming up soon and it's very expensive for us to engage and then pull back. So that's why this has turned into two tasks. So we believe doing it the way we're doing it is the very best for all of us. Um, and that's really where we're at right now. We've been working on this for a long time. This is not new. Um, so anyways, that's that. And, and Jim, just real quick on desal. I love desal too, but I love desal when there's a specific purpose. People at Catalina Island, they don't have any other choice. They have desal, right? People on a big yacht out in the ocean, they don't have any choice. They have desal on their yacht so they can drink water. Here on our coast, putting in desal, it's so expensive to operate the filtration, the electricity. You're pumping water at a very high pressure through all these different pipes. The water is so expensive. If there's other sources available that are cheaper sources and the reliability is good, then you really kind of shun desal, and that's what you've been seeing. So for certain places, like in Israel, they have a lot of desal there. Certain places, it is needed. Um, so th that's the desal story. Another interesting thing about our well water that we get that you guys may, well, I'm sure we've said this before, Orange County Water District operates a system called GWRS, Groundwater Replenishment System in Fountain Valley. They pump 130 million gallons a day of water to half of it goes to the ocean barrier. So in other words, you have the ocean and you have all the sand, so half of that 130 million gallons a day goes down into the ground to stop the salt water from coming into our barrier, right? So that we have good clean water, not salty water underneath us. The other half of that 130 million come from Fountain Valley all the way up to us. They pump it up here to Anaheim, Lakeview, Coronado Street, all of these little ponds around here because our groundwater, like Jerry alluded to, we're very lucky we live in Orange County. 
especially North Orange County, because we have the best ground basin of anybody. So it just sucks, permeates right down in the ground, and then we're able to stick a straw down in there and get it. So that's just a little explanation where a lot of the water comes from up here. In addition to the Santa Ana River, which they take that water, as Greg alluded to, that's where we got our PFAS problem, the Santa Ana River water coming down, and all the agencies have had to put in, most all the agencies have put in the PFAS tre treatment. So that's where we're at, guys. We have your interest uh, in line, believe me. And uh, we want to do the right thing and something that's affordable for our city, our ratepayers, and getting rid of an asset's tough, as you've all said. I couldn't agree more. We've labored with this one a long time, but we feel it is the right thing. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you.